Uh, Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Lauren Price here in Paris. Yeah. You've been here before as an amateur, but now as a professional. How are you feeling a couple of days away from fight night? Yeah, I'm excited. Um, got here today, you know, on the Eurostar. So that was, you know, first time experiencing that. Um, and yeah, it was, you know, easy, easy work. Uh, just settling in now in the hotel and yeah, waiting tomorrow and then good to go for Saturday. I know you were talking about your experience as being over here yeah. as an amateur. What was it like fighting over here? And is there any difference at the moment, years on as a professional? Nah, for me, I've obviously I've boxed all around the world as an amateur, and yeah, I had some good experiences here. This is where I qualified uh, for the Olympics. Um, box, boxed, um, had four fights in five days. So yeah, I got through that, and um, then went on six weeks later, and I'm boxing Tokyo. So yeah, Paris, you know, is well, it was a close place to my heart, I suppose, because that's where you know that's where my dream become true and I put my put myself a seat on that plane to Tokyo. Is it the same venue that you, you qualified from or was it a, a different venue this time around? Uh, I think it was a different venue, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, just going in to this where you've obviously got a couple of fights under your belt now, yeah. how are you adapting to the life as a professional because I've spoke to so many boxers before and it's so different to the amateur setup whether you're in Team GB or whether you're not. Yeah, to be fair, for me it's a bit different because I'm still, you know, training out with GB. Mm. Uh, I'm still up in Sheffield. The only thing's different, obviously, like Rob McCracken, he's, you know, he's training me now. Um, he knows the pro game inside out, so, you know, the sessions are a bit longer and, yeah, it's, it's a bit harder, you know, the training. But as in, like, environment and stuff like that, obviously I'm still in the same place where I've been for the last six years, so that's, that's nothing new to me, you know. I've been there, I'm... In camp, you know, Monday to Friday every week in Sheffield, uh, I live the life, and um, yeah, obviously this pro game now is my third fight. Uh, big nights, um, it's a bit different to the amateurs, you know, same sport but different game. Uh, even you know, to to bring it down to obviously boxing in front of crowds and stuff like that, you don't have that as as an amateur. You box them without an head guard on, you wearing smaller gloves. Um, yeah, so there's a di di different, you know, and it's more of a fight rather than, you know, a boxing match. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it and I'm looking forward to the journey. You talk about still being in the Team GB facilities and having Rob around. Is it Was it important to you to have that sort of, that comfort, really, of, of not a complete change from where you were to where you are now and sort of a smoother transition? Yeah, 100%. Um, for me, obviously, when... Uh, I won gold in Tokyo, you can imagine. Uh, obviously, for me, I never, I'd only ever looked up to Tokyo. And obviously, the idea of going pro, um, I didn't kind of think of that straight away. But obviously, my Instagram, my inboxes, I had a lot of, you know, people sliding into my DMs and um, wanting to, like, manage me, coach me, um, different promoters and stuff like that. So, yeah, it just, you know... When once you get to know, you know the the professional side of it in, in that aspect. For me, it was you need people around you you trust, and you know with Rob, I trust him. I trust him with you know my career, and um, he wants what's best for me. And like I said, obviously being at GB, I got all my sparring. Um, I got you know sparring the you know best in Britain. So yeah, it's it's couldn't work out any better really. Do you see yourself being in that environment in that Team G environment? Team GB environment for your whole career? Is that something you, you think you'll be doing? Yeah, probably so. Um, you know, like for me, the big thing is obviously having Rob in my corner and as my manager and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's great, obviously, facilities. i got everything there that I need, you know, down to obviously my, my S&C, um, my boxing, the, the, you know, the, the gym in itself and obviously Rob's knowledge along with obviously the GB coaches. Um, like I said, Rob's, you know, more on me now. It's, it's me, Karis and Galal, that's who he trains. So we have like our individual sessions with him, which is good, you know. But obviously we're in with the amateurs as well who are obviously fast and fit. And like I said, they, they're the best in the country, so we couldn't ask for better sparring. Do you get some of the amateurs that haven't got maybe the experience that you've got coming up to you and asking you about your experiences and sort of the uh, the wise head really in, in that sort of environment? 
Yeah, obviously, um, for me, I was once in that situation, you know, when I first come on, I looked up to the likes of, obviously, Joshua Boazzi, and, and that was, was still around then in the gym. You had AJ as well. So, for me, I guess, I'm kind of still, um, obviously, kind of re reversed the role now for the new ones coming on. Uh, I've been there, been to the Olympics and, you know, got that experience. So, I'm always there, you know, to chat to and, and tell my story. It was International Women's Day yesterday and I had a chance to sort of run through some of the fighters that we've got here in the UK. There's so many great fighters, so many champions. How does it feel to just be a part of what we've seen over the last few years and especially with the, the card you were on at the O2 not so long ago as well? Oh yeah, it was it was an honour, you know, to be on that card. Um, for me, that's something that'll always stick by me, you know, walking out in front of 20,000 people and making history, being part of an all-female card. And yeah, I just think it's great, you know, for not just women's boxing, but women's sport in general. Um, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger, you know, all the time and it can only just keep improving. And I think we've seen, you know, the level of the standard as well, uh, how much it's improved. Seeing what can be achieved there, does that give you the real hunger to be moving up the cards and start moving towards where you could be maining events, something like that? Yeah, obviously that's the, the main aim, you know, that's why I'm obviously in this game because, you know, the dream and the ambition is to go on and, you know, headline win world titles. But for me, I'm only on my third professional fight. It's about step-ups in this game and learning. And uh, that's what I intend to do, you know, each fight, just little step-ups. Um, like I said, I mentioned Rob again. When when the time's right, um, I'm sure you know I'll be in them big fights, and yeah, I look forward to it. Want to mention a name right at the top of your division in Clarissa Shields. We've sort of been looking towards that fight with Natasha Jonas, and that's something that we thought was on the cards. It's come out over the last day or two that it seems although that fight's not going to happen. Okay. Um, did you feel that was a fight that? Natasha would have a chance because nobody has come particularly close to defeating Clarissa so far. Um, for me, obviously, uh, yeah, you know, Natasha Jonas, she's she's phenomenal, you know, what she's done for, for women's boxing. And then you've got Clarissa Shields, who's double Olympic champion. Um, and for me, I'd say, you know, she's pound for pound, she's, one, she's the best. Uh, anyone, you know, who comes across her is going to have a odd night, um, Hard nice work on their hands no matter what. So yeah, it's an odd one. You know, it'll be it would I'd say, you know, it would have been a great fight. Um and yeah, you know, that's that's what we want to see at you know, as boxers, the fans is you know, peop well you, you see it kind of from, from the women anyway, you know, no one's really scared to fight anyone and um I think in a way, you know, that's that's great because the fights are exciting and you know, you're getting fifty fifty fights, so that's what we all want to see. Who do you think is the fight for Clarissa now? Even if you you do think it was Jonas, but you've got other names in in the mix as well. Um, for me, you know, it's it's an odd one. Uh, maybe you know, um, I think you know Savannah Marshall. She wants it again, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. So potentially, she said you know um, wrong game plan and stuff like that. So yeah, um, may, maybe Savannah again. Um, I, I don't know. It's it's an odd one. Do you think with a few more months training in the bank, Savannah could give it a better crack and maybe get that win? Yeah, one hundred percent. She's got the potential. Um, yeah, she's you know she, what what she's done you know throughout her career, and um, like I said, obviously she yeah, why not? Um, she she can definitely do it. Just tell us what's going to happen on Saturday night. You're going to be walking away the winner. Well, that's the plan. Yeah, um, you know, I go into every fight confident and. I suppose you need to be, but yeah, obviously um, for me, each fight, you know, as long as I perform, um, you know, show my skills and do do what I do best, then I'm sure, you know, I'll, I'll get that get W. Lovely. Cheers for your time, Lauren. Really Thank appreciate it.